Hi everyone, Nathan here again with another True Tech Troubleshooting tutorial. Today we'd like to enter into the subject of flattening dynamic PDF forms. So, so far in all our tutorials we're, we're talking about creating dynamic forms, but often after you've created the form and the form filler has filled the form out, uh, you may have the need to make it locked or make it flat. In other words, it can't be dynamically changed at all after a certain point. And there's a simple way to do this, and I want to use uh, a couple of creative uh, methods to make it intuitive and easy for the end user. So we have here a interactive form that has a drop down and a text box, and we're just going to put a few interactive elements into this form just to demonstrate that it is dynamic. We'll preview the form and make some selections and type some text. So this is a dynamic form. It can be altered, changed, and if we save it to our desktop and call it interactive and then open it in Adobe, the form is still interactive. I can still come in here and say goodbye world and the form allows me to change what was first put there by the form filler. And this may not be desirable. This may be a security hazard for a company or somebody who's designed a form and after the form filler has filled things out somebody else could possibly come in and change their answers or change what the form says. And so you may want to do what's called flattening the form and that is just a fancy way of saying turn it into a non-interactive static form. And so how do you do this? How do you do this easily in Adobe Lifecycle? Well, the one way to do it, or the one way we're going to demonstrate how to do it, is to save the form by printing it to the Adobe PDF printer. With the installation of Adobe Pro, the Adobe PDF printer is also installed. And so that when you choose that in a print dialog box, a save dialog box then appears and you can name the form something intuitive and save the form and what happens is the Adobe distiller prints that form in a flattened way so that nothing can now be changed and since I didn't fill out anything in this form it's saved with empty elements but it's flat I can do nothing to it now I can't type in the text field and I can't activate or choose an item in the drop-down list and so how can we do this intuitively? Well, there's another way. Um, instead of having the user just know how to go and print to Adobe PDF Printer, we can create an easy print button for them that allows them to not have to know so much about Acrobat. We can rename the print button Flatten Form. And then we can also, using a little JavaScript, add a simple message box that tells the user what to do. And so we're not going to get real fancy with this. We're just going to enter that in. Now that dialog box might look a little scary the way we've done it. But after we choose our item and enter our text, we choose flatten the form. The warning comes up. Choose the Adobe PDF printer. Select the file name. That's exactly what we typed in our JavaScript. That is selected. If it's not, we can do that. We can click OK. And then we can name the form flat1 to differentiate from the one we just did. Save the form and there it is. Now a couple of things to note when you do something like this whatever the screen looks like is exactly how it's going to be flattened. If you don't like these field elements with the sunken box look you can change that to something that looks a little bit more like a word processor rendered form. Also this button really it wouldn't be desirable to see this button on the flattened form because it looks like a button that you can click and obviously you can't because the, the form is no longer interactive. So it's just good programming to make that a screen only item. So now we can save this form as interactive, replace the one that's there, go into Acrobat, open the interactive form, simulating what a form filler might do. Fill out the form like a form filler might and then test our flatten the form button.
and now we have a flat form without a button with no sunken box look to it. It just looks like a word processed output. So hope this helps you create better form for your end user, more intuitive, uh, more easy to use. As always, you can ask questions uh, by going to the blog, truetechtroubleshooting.blogspot.com and watching related videos. Or you can ask questions using the YouTube channel comments page. Remember to check out the blog for related content and also code. And remember, like we always say, that IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. We'll see you next time.